wishing everyone the very best. Happy Holidays and Merry Christmas from Steve at Steve's Tech Stuff. Today's video covers installing FreeNAS. We will download the ISO image and create a bootable USB flash drive. And then we'll use that flash drive to install FreeNAS onto our server. Finally, we'll go over creating a user, pool, data set, and sharing it over a Windows SMB. As usual, it sounds like a lot, but it's really not. So let's get to it. The first thing we need to do is head over to freenas.org. Click on the download button. We'll scroll down to no thanks. Just take me to the download page. Now let's take a look at the hardware requirements. Just a 64 bit processor, one hard drive with at least eight gigs in size for the operating system, eight gigs of memory, at least one SATA or SAS controller, and at least one drive for storage. And of course you'll need one network port for access. If you meet these requirements, let's go ahead and close this page and then we'll click on legacy download. And then while this sound loads, we need to grab another tool called Rufus. And we'll use Rufus to create our USB install drive. Now that we have everything downloaded, insert the USB drive you're gonna be using to install FreeNAS. Now let's go ahead and open up Rufus and we're gonna select the ISO image, leave everything as the default settings and then click start. Okay this to confirm formatting the USB drive to create the install media. Now that we have our USB install drive created, we can go ahead and close out of this software and let's connect the USB drive to our server that we're gonna be installing FreeNAS onto. Insert the USB drive into the server we're installing FreeNAS onto. Boot the server off of the USB flash drive. This process can vary depending on the motherboard's manufacturer. But once you're booted from the USB drive successfully, select the first option, Boot FreeNAS Installer. Select option one for install. We only need to select the single drive we will be installing the FreeNAS operating system onto. Use the spacebar to select the drive and then select OK. Yes to confirm deleting the partitions and data on the drive. Go ahead and set a root password. I chose BIOS for the boot mode. It supports most motherboards. Only use Eufy if you have newer hardware. The install process time will vary depending on the hardware. And now remove the USB drive and select OK. Now select option 3 to reboot the server. It can take a few minutes to reboot. Again, speed depends on the hardware. And now let's browse to the web address listed at the bottom here. And this is the free NAS web GUI. The username is going to be root and the password is whatever you set during the install. Let's head to general settings under system so that we can check the time zone to ensure that it's set up correctly. After you check the time zone, if you need to adjust it, go ahead and click the save button. You'll need access to whatever data sets you create in the future. So first let's create a user so under accounts and then users. We're going to click on add to add a user. And then in the full name field, we'll just give it a name. Once you do the username populates automatically and then we'll just give it a password. Go ahead and click on save. Now let's head over to pools under storage. Click on add to create the pool. We're creating a new pool. Go ahead and give it a name called storage. We're going to be selecting all of the drives, moving them over to the data V devs. And then once we have all of our drives moved over, Adjust the RAID settings to your likings and then click on create. And then confirm that this is going to delete everything on the hard drives you selected and then click on create pool. Now we can create our first data set in our new pool. So go ahead and click on the three dot menu here and click on add data set. And we'll just call it test. Click on save. And now we need to modify the ACL to allow our new user access the 
data set over our Windows SMB share. So let's go down here. We're going to change this everyone to just a user. We're going to modify this to our new user, Steve. And let's just confirm with the permissions that we do have right access and we are able to append data and we'll inherit the flags and then click on save. And now that we have our ACL saved, let's move over to sharing and then the Windows share SMB and we can add our new share. Let's go down to our new data set here and then click on save. And now if we just open up Windows Explorer and browse over to our free NAS server, we'll just use our new user, Steve. We can see our test folder here. If we try and create a folder inside of it, we do have write access. And that's pretty much it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.